order. Um, first item on our agenda is public comment. And so this is comment that is for items that is not already on our existing agenda. This is something that would be in addition. We always have time for public comment. I have no. some comments. This is for something that's not on the agenda? Yes, sir. And your name? My name's Betsy Race. Okay. Betsy, what would you like to tell us? I would like to thank you for coming to the meeting in East Randolph and having a special meeting with the architect um, and showing your support, all of you being there um, for the community hall. Obviously, it's an amazing, awesome project. Um, I've had a meeting since then with Trini and we've with the committee and also with the committee and we've come up with a plan going forward. And I want to tell you a couple of the pieces that we want to be able to discuss with you on your next agenda. Is this an appropriate place to do it? I think if, if, if it's not going to be too long. Yeah. Nope, it won't be long. Uh, parking was something that came up at the meeting and we have uh, got in contact with two owners. One of them is interested in um, working out something for us to have parking. So that's something we need to discuss with the select board. Um, the other thing is we're going to be going through all the options that were in the um, proposals estimates and bringing to you what as a committee we think we can support and help move forward and so we'll need some time for that um, and then it looks like are we going to be hiring an, our next engineer and i we have two avenues for that, and we want to discuss that with you. Great. Well, thank you so for if that we, ah. Can we get on the agenda for next month? I don't see why not. Okay. You know, it's not, not my, I don't put items directly on the agenda. It's usually the chair or the town manager, but I don't see why that would be a problem. One more thing I want all of you boys to know. Sorry, <laughs> it's my age. Uh, all of the select board to know is that the sign for welcome to East Randolph is on its way up. It, we, the firemen were there and helped with getting a framework in and we've got a little bit more to do and it should go up in a couple of weeks, should be finished. And we'll invite you to it for that historical moment. Well, thank you for your comment. Thanks for taking the time to be with us this evening. And um, with that, there's no other public comment. We will move on to approval of the agenda. I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? So aye. 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 Motion passes. <coughs> we'll move on to our public hearing. The vicious or aggressive dog. And um, do we still not have Milo here? Okay. Usually when we do such a hearing, we'll start out with a report from the animal control officer. I can fill in the outline in terms of how we get here. Milo has some other um, interactivity that she'd be better able to describe, but I can at least sort of set the stage as to how we get here. Um, so we received a report. Of this would be a, a dog attacking another dog on Maple Street. We received this last week, setting in motion the hearing process that's outlined for us in the ordinance and in statute. Um, and so we've we've got that report. We sent a letter to the dog's owner notifying them uh, of this event when the hearing would be set this up. And so it goes the specific incident reported to us in the email occurred around 8 a.m. on the 30th of July. Um, a dog bit another dog on the leg um, and it was reported that the the other dog uh, required some emergency care and stitches. Um, one dog was walking, one dog came off a property uh, or came really close to the edge of a property and bit the other dog. We've also had other people supply us with materials before the hearing. What you had in your packets included something from the postmaster about incidents that he had involving a dog at the property. We heard 
um, today from the dog's owners. You have that in terms of their perspective and what they've done. And then we heard from two other folks in the area about um, incidents that they described with the dog biting, I believe, in each case. In one case, there was a bite on a person. I'm reading this right. Yes, on a person. This was, but this occurred. Real quick from the email dates. Looks like April of 2021. It hadn't been reported at that time through the methods that get to us at least. Um, and some other concerns that are, I guess, ongoing. Um, Trevor, if I may, if I may yeah. interrupt you for a moment. So we have the complaint which mm -hmm. instigated this hearing. Right. And we have other now reports of previous incidents, mm -hmm. but is it, my, my understanding is that none of those incidents were reported to the town until right. now. Not that I'm aware of, no. Not that it's come up through the hearing process that we've been a bit of it's kicking off what you guys do per the ordinance and statute. So, so these other refer these other incidents that you're referring to have, <laughs> are, are, have been described since this hearing has been announced. Yes, yeah. And that's when all this has come in. Yep, so similar to when we did one in June, we had the primary complaint that you were considering and some other people provided context for their encounters during the hearing. And so folks have submitted that stuff in lieu of, or instead of, or in addition to participating tonight. Are any of these <clears throat> ones that we have now older than your tenure here? I, the one where somebody got bit would be uh, about concurrent to when I arrived. And then I think the postmaster's one might actually predate me based on the conversation I had with him and what he wrote down. So that's before April of 21. And I guess he reported it. There's a postal service process for reporting these types of things but that doesn't tie in in any way to what we do. So we wouldn't have, wouldn't have known. It wouldn't necessarily have kicked off our process too. Ours starts with a formal written complaint and it's sort of how it's structured. That can be handwritten, emailed. And, and are, we, are we certain that this is, all these incidents are referring to the same animal? I think it might be as part of the conversation drilling at, at that a little bit. Some just reference a dog, some reference a dog by name. So it might be figuring out with the formal complaint, which of the dogs, you know, just verifying that. I believe there's a dog named Jackson. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm getting the dog names wrong. Jackson Going Lucia. through this on the fly a little bit. So, yeah. Um, and then the other ones don't always reference which dog or even provide a description. So we just, the dog at the property. Right. Okay. Anything else we need to, any other background that we need to consider? I think that's everything that you've been given. I would encourage you at this point to, to try to, to get any context or incident specific stuff or dog owner specific stuff. I think we've got everyone here represented in some form. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can maybe go through that part of the process to try to draw out any questions you might have. Unless or until we get maybe Milo. Well, I just texted her some. Okay. I'm not sure she hasn't responded yet. Well, I texted Mimi. Hmm? I texted Mimi to see if she could tell me what. Okay. So would, would it be appropriate at this time to see if there's additional verbal testimony people? Uh, yeah, I think the way to, to maybe structure it and it follows what we did in June would be at this point, if Abigail Tonks is anywhere here or online? Right there? there. Okay. Uh, that's our complainant. So we usually start there, have them provide a description uh, um, uh, of what happened, answer any questions you might have. And then we go to the dog's owners. Usually, I don't know where the king's are in the back row there. So then it would be questions for them. And at that point, you could open up to anybody else who might be in there and wants to provide some sort of statement or testimony is the way it's described in the ordinance and other places. And then you could do a question section that's really just for you to drill out anything that you have remaining. And at that point, figure out if you're ready to deliberate and decide on an action. Thank you. Yeah. Abby? So 
the incident didn't happen to me. It happened to Brian. So oh. I, I wrote the complaint on behalf right. of Brian, so he might be a better person to sure. describe the incident. Go ahead, right, Brian. <laughs> um, everything that you just read was accurate. At 8 a.m. on July 30th, we were out for a walk. We were on the road or the sidewalk, um, both the dog and I, and um, a small brown dog, uh, I assume his name's Jax from what I've learned since, um, came running across the yard onto the sidewalk and um, aggressively was aggressively postured and then uh, I pulled on my dog to pull him away and Jax reached out and bit him on his back leg, um, biting through the skin and drawing blood. Um, and at that point, um, I was shouting and yelling at Jax and yelling to the people in the house who I couldn't see um, and leaning over my dog to where this other dog was biting my dog. Um, as I got close, he let go and backed off and we moved into the street and away from him. Um, I waited there in the street and um, no one came to the door, no one came out. Uh, we moved them back towards our house, thinking we definitely need to go to the vet. That's our dog's name. And um, as we moved out of sight of the house, I heard the door open. I came back and said, excuse me, hello, your dog just bit my dog. And Candy and I had a conversation. She was able to see the dog, um, the wound on my dog. Uh, I told her we'd have to go to the vet, and um, she said that um, Jax has trouble with people walking on the sidewalk. I'm paraphrasing, I don't know her exact words, but that was the essence of what she said. I don't remember the rest of our conversation. Um, it was very amenable. Um, and then we did go to the vet for emergency proceedings about an hour and a half later he needed three staples and um had to be subdued for that all to happen and um, we sent the bill to candy and she promptly paid it um and uh that's about the essence of our experience okay So Candy, would you like to tell us? In what? terms of that, I didn't see the incident. Um, mm -hmm. As soon as I was aware that Jax was barking, I came out and uh, Brian was at the edge of our property, um, kind of by the edge. The sidewalk goes below the, the street, but that's where he, it was at the edge of our property and we discussed it. I apologized profusely. I told him that we were going to be moving Jax to the back so this wouldn't happen because he was very protective of, of dogs walking, going on the sidewalk, that's true. We have an electric fence um, that's maybe 12 to 15 feet from the sidewalk that he had never gone through um, until he may. Um, and it happened, I think, with the gentleman next to Brian there. It was the first time it had ever happened. Um, I thought maybe the battery was, was, had gone, but the battery still tested. I put a new battery in, um, and everything was okay until until this happened. Um, I believe that in my anxiety over Jack's getting out and taking off the taking off the uh, collar several times and trying to test it around, I I might have lengthened um, lengthened the collar because when the dog watch um, technician came on Monday, he said it was it was loose, and so that perhaps Jax wasn't getting wasn't getting the shot. So it was a real shock. Uh, a real shock to both of us after a year and a half of no issues for him to um, to get out. So of course I immediately uh, called uh, the dog person. He's from New York, um, and he arrived this Monday. He couldn't get here sooner, and he has uh, he's put two lines in the backyard um, 
and we've also purchased a, a heavy duty collar for Jacks, um, which instead of like zapping him, like most of these collars do, it really hurts him. Um, but he said that they just don't go through that. Um, in the event that the worst happened and he did go through it, we still have the line, we still have the line with flagpole and the line at the, at the, uh, at the sidewalk. So <laughs> it's very difficult to even imagine that he would get out. They can't see the, the road from where they are. Um, it's, as I say, it's behind the house where the line is, and it's a double line at that, it kind of goes in a loop. So if he went out through one, he'd go through the other. Um, but Jax doesn't like pain. Um, he's never, until, I say, until his collar man um, malfunctioned, he's never, never tested it. Um, that's why this was so shocking to me. I feel horrible about it. Um, and we've done what we can, you know. It's, I, I wish we could just immediately have gotten the guy here to fix everything, but, but it takes a while. He's, um, he's, uh, he lost his, uh, his partner and he's doing it by himself, so it, it took a while to get him here. Um, but he's, we went through everything, uh, we've tested everything, he's taught me how to make sure that the thing is tight enough. Um, and as I say, it had been working and I think I probably loosened it. I was so panicky after the first time and I think it was May um, that I was taking it off and I was testing it and I was fooling around with the transformer in the garage, which I think made it worse. Um, so we are where we're at, I, you know. So they'll stay in the backyard. They'll stay in the backyard. They can't even see the street. And I'm really sorry all this happened. It wasn't something that we were casual about. Jax was a rescue from South Carolina. Um, we, the, the biting came last spring after we'd first gotten him. And, uh, and I don't even know that he was angry when he did it. It almost seemed like uh, he was just trying to get attention. He bit me a couple times, never broke the skin. It was more like a puppy nip, um, but he was still a puppy. And we've broken him of that habit. Um, we've had people in our, working at our house since Mother's Day. There hasn't been a single problem. Um, they like Jax, you know. Um, he's a sweet dog, actually, believe it or not. <laughs> you know, but, uh, um, but the biting is over. Um, he never broke the skin of anybody, just nipped him. Um, but that was, you know, within a month or two, we were able to stop that. I don't know how to stop the dog, the dogs on the sidewalk, which, though for us, the only possible solution was to make sure that they could never leave the backyard. Mm -hmm. So did you say you, you got Jax this past spring? <laughs> last year. Last, a year ago. In spring. March 21 or something. Okay. And we had to wait a month to get the invisible fence in, so he got away from me a couple times um, in uh, March and April of 21. Um, you know, he's, he's a fast dog. And, the, and uh, anyway, uh, when we solved, we got that solved. Um, and there, as I say, it seems quite shocking that he's, he's left. But it, to my knowledge, after Jack's, um, on this one, he got out a couple, a couple days later when I was taking the leash off him in the house and the door wasn't quite closed. So anyway, um, I think we're on top of it. I don't believe it's gonna happen again. If it did, then obviously we'd have to consider whether we're going to keep Jacks in the village or not, you know, but uh, uh, he's certainly safe with people. And uh, if he doesn't see the dogs walking down the sidewalk, he should be okay. It's not that if Lucy's not around, he doesn't do this. Lucy is a sweet beagle who barks. And she barks, and Jacks is bonded. It's like his mother, and he's bonded with him. So, you know, if Jax, if Lucy barks, and Jacks gets upset. You know? So, I'm sorry, Lucy is a dog which is at your house beagle. occasionally? She's a beetle, yeah. But she doesn't live at your house. Yeah. Yeah. She does. Her second dog. Yes. Oh, it's a second. Yes. It's... Yeah, she's like six. And Jax, you know, has bonded her with her. And if Lucy barks, Jax gets upset. You know, we got a bark collar for Lucy thinking, and while that worked, and Jax didn't get upset. <laughs> but then the, the, it malfunctioned, and it went several times just buzzed Lucy even when she wasn't doing anything, so we couldn't continue using it. Um, but that's the source of it, you know. Anyway. I, I think this will work. Um, we have a very strong, uh, very strong uh, fence that they're not going to get through. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really sorry it happened. I told them I'm sorry. I tried to reach out um, to them on, um, on, on uh, Messenger, but I didn't get a response. Um, 
so, so I just want to make sure I'm, I'm clear. So you're saying that since you've had this work done and this technician at your home, that from, from that point on, the dogs are, and both dogs are only let out through the right. back door. Right. And they're basically, they're, they're enclosed in the yes. backyard space, which is completely surrounded. Yes. And that they're, they can't get to the front yard anymore no. where there's been no. issues in the, in the past. No. Any other questions from the, the board? Um, nope, I'm fine with it. Any other comment from the public? Just real yeah, quick, I, I had, when Pat had asked me about the timing, I went back and looked at the postmaster. He described it as about a year ago, so we can say probably summer of last year. So it would have been within my tenure, but was reported through the Postal Service's process for the stuff. Okay. It was reported. He said he reported it through, they, they have an internal process, but it wasn't reported to the town to us through that no, process. But there's no necessarily contact with the town. No. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm the other person that, our dog who we uh, rescued uh, a year ago um, was very abused and all that, and she's real friendly. And my wife and I, Robin, would walk down the hospital, we would come up Wiggins Street, and then we, because, and don't mean anything to it, but because we had heard that the mailbox had to be moved to the outside the street because it attacked a postman. Um, we heard from the neighbor across the street that she was bit, nipped by him and that he broke through the, uh, the fence. So we always would come down Wiggett Street and go across near um, Robin's house and walk on the other side of the street because we knew that sometimes he could break through. And now we found out why, and, and it makes sense. But it was, we would know that. And when Jack would come around, we always talked to him. My dog loved him. We would see him on the side fence because he had fences up the side. And, uh, and, and the, Lucy is a really sweet dog. And uh, so that whenever Jack would run back and forth in the driveway and bark and really mean, the hair on the back of his neck was standing up. So knowing that he did break through and, and, and bit uh, Robin, and we were told that he uh, uh, bit the postman, that's why the mailbox had to be moved from the house to the street. And knowing all you know the different things that had happened, we walked on the other side of the street. That particular night, maybe it was one of the nights when the collar was loose, but we were coming up Wicked Street and my wife and I were walking Izzy on the leash, and uh, Jack, Jack came around and got out onto Wicked Street. That's what really scared us, because he came around and grabbed my dog on the butt, right on the back side. And I yelled and screamed and yelled back and, and made him go back into the house. And then Mrs. King came out and she says, oh, it never happened before. And I said, yeah. you did say that. You said it, it never yeah. happened before, but yet I knew that it got the mailman. I knew it broke and got uh, uh, Robin. So that's what really made us upset. And so uh, there was a stick laying there and I picked up the stick and uh, Mrs. King said to me, it's not helping that dog yelling at him with a stick in me. And I said, I was trying to protect him in case he came back after Izzy, myself, and my wife. I wanted something to be able to, it was just a small stick that was laying in her yard. But that's the thing that happened. She did say if it was any bill that she would take care of it. But if I, my concern was, I know that there's a little, there's a neighbor next door who walks her son. And I was so afraid that if it got out and hit and, and attacked this two-year-old, it was I was worried about a child. And and my dog is okay, but it's um, will not walk down that street. Now we have to go through the parking lot at the hospital, and he, she keeps looking down there, and she's scared. She's afraid. And keeps looking over there, and will not walk down uh, Maple Street anymore. She's afraid. And then after uh, Lincoln got attacked. And, and that maybe when the collar wasn't put on, there was a lady who her mother just passed. Her name is uh, Jenny. Jenny. Jenny Carpenter. She couldn't hurt her carpenter. Her mother just passed 
a couple of days ago and she's dealing with the funeral today. That's why she couldn't be here. But her little dog named uh, uh, Jelly Bean got attacked after this one happened. It happened to Lincoln. So it really scared me that a child was going to be attacked, you know, because I know that it went after Robin and it went after the mailman. So that was my concern. And so, can you remind me again when your when your incident was? I Robin thinks it was in the middle of June. We're thinking it was June. It was and the then, first time that he broke through the fence. Mm -hmm. um, if I might say, when he, when he got Robin, it was the first in the first weeks after we got him over a year and a half ago. So we're talking a year ago, June. Uh, yes, he got Robin. He didn't break the skin, but he nipped her. Um, and we, the fence wasn't even up yet. We had just, we had just gotten him. Um, and that's when that happened. Um, and the postmaster was last, was last uh, I think, late spring, early summer. Um, and he was still like occasionally nipping people, which he doesn't do anymore. Um, but, uh, but he did. But as I say, he was never angry when he did it. He just it was like he was getting attention, but because of that, we moved. You know, we moved the uh, the uh, the post off the post box down to the road, so that we wouldn't have to deal with it. Um, nobody else coming on our lawn has, has ever had a problem um, in the last year. Uh, and well, let me tell you, we've had we've had everybody um, um, working on our house. It seems, uh, and it hasn't been an issue. But it's true. He went out. It was the first time that he got out of the fence. Was uh, with the gentleman over there, and uh, and he did with uh, with uh, Lincoln, and he did with uh, with uh, Jenny Carpenter. Uh, didn't bite the dog, um, but he did. He was, I'm sure, very scary when he ran out like that. Mm -hmm. But the dog was okay; nothing had happened. Um, and the day was about two days before the uh, dog watch people were able to come here. Okay. So, you know, usually when he's out, I'm around. Um, Keeping an eye on things. Yeah, but uh, two points. Uh, there was another incident where I heard that uh, this lady had two dogs, and it came out and bit one, went back, came back and bit another dog. I don't know who it was, but that well, was, that was probably me. But he didn't bite my dogs. He didn't bite. No, he came he, out. He did not bite my dogs. No. Okay. No. Were you going to talk to? Him? Uh, I was. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. And that was. And the other thing I want to say is that we are dog lovers. I don't want to see the dog put down. I don't want any of that happening or have to get rid of it. As long as it sounds like the fence is cool, but if you know, if had, if, if need be, maybe a, a leash, because our dog is always on a leash. You know, even in our driveway, and we sit out there while she's out there, because you know, we're afraid somebody will drive in the driveway. My wife's really really protective of the fact she found out today our cat's got cancer that's why she's not here and her mom just passed away last week so that's why she's not here so thank you okay um candy how how big is jack's 20 pounds 22 pounds okay. and your beautiful dog it's just <laughs> any air comment up in the neck uh, other comment from the public what I'm wondering if there's any other comment from the public. Hi. Um, so um, I just want to say, um, you know, I'm sorry. That you're, okay, that's awful. And I'm sorry that you guys are going through this job. So that's awful, too. Um, I, I've had so many dogs run at me before. Like, it's really, honestly, not uncommon. <laughs> so I don't want you guys to feel like Jax is an anomaly or something. It happens a lot. Um, but I think that it can oftentimes be really stressful for certain and scary, dogs and scary, to yeah. live in such a high populated area. Oh, um, mm. And that, you know, having so many people and dogs walking by might be too much for Jax. Um, and maybe he would be happier in a more rural environment. Uh, I know that's hard to think about. <laughs> um, but he seems like he's probably a really sweet dog. Um, and. But there's a lot of a lot of traffic on Maple Street. Um, well, the people walking don't bother him. Cars don't bother him. Just other dogs. It's a dog walking mostly yeah. on our side of the street and that bothers him. If we Lucy, have a lot if of Lucy is there, yeah. if Lucy is there, Bartu, yes. And we have a lot of dogs. Yeah, we do. There's a lot of dogs. Um, in the and then I'm gonna have to say I've had dogs run out of electric fences. Yeah. A lot of times. Yes, that's why we got um, the heavy duty, the heavy duty. Uh, um, Collar, which he didn't want to sell us because he was very strong. Um, but that's why we did that. Yeah. Um, 
I think and, the hard and Jack's part never is, had as long as the collar was working. He'd never gone through. Yeah, I, I think the hard part is though when a dog's really focused on something, even with a shock, um, if they're really focused, maybe mm -hmm. they, they'll go. Um, and um, you know, <clears throat> I I just would think that maybe for Jack's sake, you guys should think about maybe trying to find a more rural home for him. I know that's hard. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and then as far as the board, I mean, um, maybe it's a little bit off topic, but I don't feel safe with electric fences in town limits. Um, I have lots of places I walk by where there's electric fences and dogs come right to the edge and they bark and they look like they want to get at you. Um, and it makes me pretty nervous because it takes a split second for them to run through that fence. Um, and, you know, even, and, and I have two dogs um, who are very, very friendly. But I also worry about how they would react to another dog coming up, running at us. And if they engage and decide that they need to protect themselves or me, and we have a three dog fight or a four dog fight, um, it could be it could be really dangerous. Um, and luckily, maybe also a tough topic, I've taken a lot of dog walking classes and I've learned how to handle a situation when a dog does come at you with using owning your space and using your body and your voice and your height, um, which is I think the only reason that Jax did not bite my dog is because I was able to get him to back off. Um, and then he did come back and then he ran away again when I did this and you came out and you grabbed him. Um, and actually, I don't even think you grabbed him. I think you just came out and he ran to you. So, he generally um, does that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm afraid if he had bit one of my dogs that my two very powerful dogs versus 20 pound jacks, it would have put my dogs in a pretty bad situation too. So. What, what was your, I'm sorry, we didn't catch the name just for the hearing if you could. Megan. Megan, okay. Yeah. Is there any other? Um, I'd like to also, in the same vein as what Megan was saying, that even if Jax can't be rehomed or moved to a more rural location, um, there's still visibility between the backyard and Wiggett Street. And um, when Jax was in the front yard running back and forth, it was clear that he was agitated, that he was aggressive as he was running back and forth, even if he wasn't able to cross the line when the fence was active and working for him, um, it was provoking anxiety in the dog. And so having him not be exposed to that would be the best thing for Jax. And ways to have him not be exposed to that would be, I mean, obviously rehoming him is a sad thought for someone who's bonded with him, but that's one possibility. Short of that, making it so that he cannot see people or dogs that would provoke his anxiety would be that next level. Like a solid fence? Like maybe? a solid fence or a, a visual fence and um, a, vis a vision blocking fence along Wiggett Street and along that oh. back corner where the, that last um, uh, edge of your property is would reduce his anxiety, make him less aggressive, and help to um, not provoke that response in Jax. I also would like for there to be something physical that would keep him from moving from the backyard to the front yard um, for safety's sake. And my point is they've got a beautiful yard. It's a huge backyard. And I, I was hoping that there would be a fence from the corner of their home. Some beautiful home, beautiful yard, have a fence from the corner of their house over to Wicked Street, from the corner of the house over to uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Uh, 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 Ken Forey's house, because I think it's fenced in every other place. And that might be a good idea if he didn't see us, but even if it was a fence that he couldn't get through, because I'm still concerned that if we walk, well, my dog will no longer walk down Maple Street. She is petrified, so we have to cut through South Street. When we go around the hospital, she keeps looking back and she's scared. Hopefully someday she'll get over it. But, but if, if, if he can break, maybe he can't break through this one. But if he does, who knows? You know, it could hurt. Somebody. 
another dog or a child. That's it. Thank you. Is there any other comment from the public? May? Yeah. Uh, so everyone has mentioned, I'm Christina Yohan. Everyone has mentioned management techniques and they're always a great idea. I was wondering uh, if, um, if you are willing or interested in training, please reach out to me. I am, I am very willing and hopefully to, to assist with the dog if you're willing. So I, will get, I can get in touch with you at a few minutes later. I just wanted to, because training can help put one more barrier up so that this does not repeat as, as likely. And we don't have to talk about rehoming if it doesn't get to that. I mean, that's, I don't know. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Seeing seeing no additional comment from the public, um, I would entertain a motion to go into deliberative session. So moved. Second. Okay. I think if you guys are agreeable just with the crowd here, the crowd online, if the four of us we can go yeah, move. Move. Well, it might be easier yeah. than trying it's to easier. Waiting room and so yeah, so just for the public um, to understand what we're doing. Um, in situations like these, the board is, um, has the authority to enter into what's called deliberative session, where we can have a private conversation and sort of talk amongst ourselves about what we think are the appropriate remedies to the issue at hand. And then um, we will come back and, um, and announce our, our decision and, and take a vote, I believe, in, in, in public um, when we're done. Um, I don't think this is going to be a terribly long no, I don't think so. um, session, so if people want to wait, that'd be great. Um, but no one's under under any obligation to stay um, either. So um, with that, um, we'll go to your office, Charlie. Yeah. So we'll call the meeting back to order. Uh, before I forget, I just I'd like to thank everybody who's here. Has had a comment to. So just say how appreciative I am of the very sort of calm, constructive, and low-key conversation that we're having. Because these things often can be very emotional for a lot for good reasons, but we're we're keeping it very calm and that's really wonderful. It really, really helps. So thank you all for for, for being that way for us. Um, so we, we have come out of our deliberative session and um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna describe um, sort of our I'm going to use the word remedy, um, for lack of a better term. And, um, and then um, once we get that sort of set in, as, as we described in our meeting, um, we will have a formal vote on that remedy, um, and then we'll c conclude our hearing. Um, so what we, dis what we um, discussed was that, um, um, as, as, um, as some people mentioned in, in, in our previous discussion, um, we are not 100% convinced that, um, or percent sure, confident that an electric fence is going to keep the dog out 100% of the time. Um, so, so we would we would like you to in, um, install a fence, um, and that fence can be as as big or as small as, as as you need it to be in terms of the area it it goes it goes around. But we would like you to put in a fence from the place in the backyard where you release the dogs so that they have an enclosed, physically enclosed area. Um, we'd like that fence to be four feet high. Um, but, and besides that, it's, it's really up to you what, what that fence looks like um, in terms of materials, in terms of whether you can see through it or not is, is really your, your call. But we think that given the, our discomfort with having uh, an electric fence, knowing that dogs can run through them, at least in rare instances, um, and given the history of the dog with, with, with its aggressive behavior towards other dogs, we feel like we have to have an enclosed area that's physically separated from the public. Um, and, um, and so then the timing of that is also up to you, but between now and when the fence is installed, you will need to um, keep the dogs on leashes when they're outside. Is there any, did I cover everything? You did. Okay. And the time is up to them to a certain extent, right? 
That's right. So you 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 could um, put in the fence, you know, at at your discretion in terms of the timing, but un but until the fence is in place, you need to keep the dogs on leashes. And so I guess I entertain a motion to um, move that forward. To, move, to, to, yeah, to, to, to move that description. Yeah, move that motion. Second. You have that description down well, Trevor? Yep. Okay. Okay. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. And um, and I, I feel obligated to just also say that um, this is this is about this. There are, there are when we go through this process, there are um, there's um, actions that the board can take to ensure the safety of the public from from dogs that have a history of biting, um, and we are now on, we are now operating under the authority that we have given a first incident. If there is a second incident. We have a lot more latitude in terms of what we can do, and the, and it's and it, it's not it's not places that we want to go. So I'm I'm very hopeful that we, we won't be seeing you again in front of the select board. And and with that, we will conclude our public hearing. Do, do we need to have a vote to come out of this hearing, or we're just done? I think you just close as the chair. You just close the hearing and. Okay. 6 24. Later. Yeah. Okay, so the hearing is closed and we will move on to the next item on our agenda. Thank you all for coming to this part of the meeting. You are welcome to stay for the rest of our meeting. We have all sorts of exciting things to talk about. Dinner. But if you feel like you need to go, uh, we won't be terribly insulted. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll move on to the consent calendar. Motion to approve. Can I have one correction on the minutes? Yes, Pat. Uh, line 59 on July 14th minutes. I think there should be a second there and then the vote. See you, man. Okay. See yep. you guys. Good night. Thank you for coming. Good night. Okay. Yeah, there should be a second in there. And a vote. Yep. <laughs> With that one correction, if Perry agrees, I will I'm second it. Close. You're close. You scrutinized it, okay? okay. I just made the motion. <laughs> okay, so we're good now? Yes. Yep. Was there a motion? I might have missed it. I made the motion. Did. I second it. You second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. <clears throat> Move on to our business part of our meeting. Consider setting property tax rates for fiscal year 23. Got Dennis with us. I think he's Dennis is on board, representing the yeah. listers, and is. I'm happy to either answer questions or just kind of give you a quick run through of how we calculate these, which I really think is. I'll take the quick run through. Yeah, sure. I'll say so, quick run through. Sounds so, good. Provided you with a couple of different um, pieces of paper. One of them is just titled 2022 FY 2023 Municipal Tax Rates. And that's kind of the worksheet that we use to separate. So you'll notice that the first thing we do is we take the amount to be raised by taxes for the general fund, uh, which is the general, the highway, and the library. That number comes directly from the amount that was voted on in budgets for at the last town meeting. And then we add in all of the special appropriations that were voted on to come up with a number that we need to raise uh, to meet the budget. And we divide that by the municipal grand list, and that's how we get the municipal tax rate of 85.85 85 cents. We do a similar thing with the police district tax rate. We take the amount that was voted on at town meeting to be raised by taxes and divide that by the police district grand list and come up with that rate. And then we have a third one, which is the local agreement tax rate. This one's a little harder to understand, but um, we raise money to pay education taxes for a couple of different reasons. One, the town of Randolph has voted for several years to make the Randolph Senior Center tax exempt. And we have the authority to not tax them for municipal taxes, but we still have, they still have to pay the education tax. Mm -hmm. So we have to raise the money 
from the rest of the town to pay that education tax. So we take their assessed value and their advantage value of $1,555 times the non-resident rate to come up with that figure, which is $2,400. And then the veterans, um, folks that are found eligible for a veterans deduction um, automatically get a $10,000 tax exemption from the state um, for the education portion, and we do the same. Randolph years ago has voted to increase that to $40,000, which is the max you can do. So the additional $30,000 that we tax exempt, the state doesn't. So we have to raise the education tax for the $30,000 on those properties at the residential rate. Um, just so you know, we had 34 el eligible properties um, this last year. I think we had 32 the year before that the folks had um, an exemption for. So that amount um, we have to raise in taxes is $15,700. So those are the three different tax rates um, that the listers and the assessor are, are proposing to be established. And then there's a couple more sheets that are just for your information. There's a summary um, of the FY2023 tax rates. There's a breakdown between the homestead, if you're living in your house and you claim that's your homestead, as opposed to a non-residential use, both for the town and the police district. And then the last page is a comparison of the tax rates for the last this year as opposed to the last three years. End result is the total tax is down a little bit for everybody. That's right. Mm -hmm. And part of that's because the legislature put more money in the education. head fund. Yep. The education tax rate is down. Part of it's more money and part of it is our CLA. And it's also with the with the education tax part, um, we're under a new formula, right? It this is. year. And so that formula was beneficial to our district mm -hmm. in terms of how the change um, from last year happened. Some towns have seen an increase, but we actually saw a small decrease. Okay. Looks good to me. <laughs> Those are kind of the rates, you know? That's it. You want to pay the bills. <laughs> you got to pay the bills, right? The math I'll is move, the math. I'll move to approve the tax rates as presented by the listers for fiscal year 2023. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Dennis. Thank, Thank you, you very guys. much. Thanks, Dennis. I'd love to stay. <laughs> no, that's okay. Take care. Bye, Dennis. Okay, we're going to move on to uh, Main Street parking concerns. <laughs> Would you like to or me? <laughs> well, I can do a little bit. Yeah, no, you do a little bit. Yeah, this was added by request. I think Harry got a similar set of calls as we've had before. The The crux of the concern um, seems to be in the section of Main Street between, say, the little green gazebo area headed up toward Merchants Row, but really in front of sort of the, I guess it would be the northern end of that block toward the, the gazebo where people are. Um, it appears that people who live in the apartments above some of those buildings are parking in the front in those public spaces overnight for extended durations, whatever it might be. And those are intended to be more cyclical in nature, and those tenants are supposed to be parking in some other areas, essentially on the other side of that building block, or you've got the town lot not too far away either, um, for which there aren't those time-related concerns. And so some of the merchants on that have raised that concern with us, um, and what it really boils down to, we've, we've um, at one point, I think a sheriff's deputy went up and knocked on doors and asked tenants to, to move their vehicles that had been there for a while. One of the things that highlighted for us, and this came up a little bit with the public assembly conversation last time, is that we've got um, some of our ordinances are dated and they hinder enforcement in this case. It would be cleaner to update the ordinance, clarify what's supposed to be in that area for how long, make the signage match. And then it makes it a little easier for the sheriff's 
folks to enforce that ordinance to maybe gain better compliance. So really the takeaway at, a, at the simplest level is to get into that ordinance, update it. I think there are references to Randolph Village Fire Department, and there might be a few other, I mean, uh, police, police department, department, sorry. Right um, and maybe a few others that would be worth cleaning up too, and the signage and the, and the ordinances are a little inconsistent in their timeline. So it's just that kind of cleanup puts us in a better spot to maybe enforce the rules that we've already intended to have in place. Um, and that should hopefully alleviate some of that in addition to trying to continue some of the communication pieces that have already happened, such as, hey, we gotta get these folks to park where they need to, um, or where they're supposed to, I should say. There is parking for these units elsewhere, as I understand it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I missed anything, Barry, or... No, it's, it's the crux of it. It's, it's just, um, it's, you know, the merchants are struggling, it's, you know, Saturday morning, you know, hair, hair appointments and things like that. And people <clears throat> are having to park further up the street to walk down to the barber shop or the beauty salon. And it. so it's, it's a, you know, it's a problem. And, uh, you know, they they have made efforts apparently on their own to ask people to, you know, not park there during that period of time. But... That's they just, they just smile at them and walk away. So I think we don't have enough teeth in the ordinance right now to be able to tow somebody, mm -hmm. but we need to get that kind of stuff in there so that no different than a winter, you know, parking ban right. and stuff right. like that. You know, you tow a few people a couple times and after that they pay attention. Yeah. Sure. So I think we need to get this cleaned up and support the merchants here and, and get this thing buttoned up. Yeah. Okay. Are the complaints that you've heard overnight complaints during the day? It's not so much overnight. It's this. It's the business hour stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, there's cars that are sitting there all day. I mean, they've literally taken pictures of number plates and texted to me and say, "Well, this car was here at eight o'clock this morning. It's still here now at noon time." Yeah. You know, they're not shopping. Right. There could be somebody that's there overnight plus during the day. Yeah, I, I think that's what's going on. It's the yeah. tenants is what they right. we all believe. It's you know, it's the majority of the tenants of, that are in those spaces above those units. Mm -hmm. So about the business figure side. out a way to write the ordinance to discourage this behavior. so we can yeah and you know whether we you know the conversation came up also about you know well maybe we need to have parking meters <coughs> there you know i'm i'm not you know i think the parking meters left because the merchants didn't want parking meters years ago but they felt it discouraged you know business but now maybe that parking meters might be appropriate and then somebody you know wanted to validate a parking i mean there's a lot of digital stuff now that you can do with parking meters that i think could benefit the businesses so i don't know yeah well, try what you want to try i'm agreeable to start with the ordinances yeah. and uh, tell a few people do some research and see what works for other places yeah i'm sure we're not the only no nope. village that's having this kind of issue no this is a this is a continual push pull yeah i mean montpelier has parking meters woodstock has parking meters um yeah, I mean, I know that for a fact, and I think that, you know, there's other communities that have put all these new high-tech parking meters in, so maybe that's the solution. You can go on an app, and if somebody wants to validate your parking, you can do it, and bang, it's over, and they can still, you know, that might be a benefit to their business. I don't know. But okay. Trevor could, said he could get us some information about the cost of those type yeah. of things. And Montpelier just went through this, so using that household connection. It's the combination of the, the newer smart meters plus, I think they use a park mobile app, the meters have a little number on them. So somebody going into the beauty salon, say, could go in and say, I'm at, you know, meter, or even take a picture of them at meter 1163. Okay, well, we just added your appointments for an hour, and we just added an hour to that. And nobody has to go back out to the meter. They uh, can do it. Oh, that's really interesting, because the whole point of the meters from is an not app. really, it's not about collecting money. It's about... Mm -hmm. It's about control. About keeping people from parking there yeah. Longer beyond than, yeah. the, the, the necessary amount so that they're not in the way of yeah. the business businesses and the more we tend to some of those digital the easier it'll make it actually on the accounting end too um, we don't need somebody to go and empty the meters maybe as frequently and there are some things that if you did go that route with our current footprint it might be a little easier um, because of some of the tech otherwise we're gonna get Kim a safety vest and a bucket and <laughs> Bring it on. Other That's duties good. as assigned. So, right. Right. Okay. Yeah. so the area <laughs> we're talking about too is basically Main Street and probably Merchants Row and not across the tracks. That doesn't seem to be an issue mm -hmm. over there. It's basically Main Street yeah. and Merchants sure. Row. That makes sense. So, okay. but yeah, the ordinance certainly is a thing we can do in relatively the, in, quickly in the now. It, it's kind of a nice time. If you're going to get under the hood of the parking ordinance, we can maybe do some of the winter parking cleanup and <coughs> some other things. 
hit them all at once by the time you get through. Presuming everything goes relatively smoothly, the ordinance will be effective just in time uh, to be truly useful during a winter parking mm. situation too. So it's we're so probably on the right edge of the wave. Yeah. <laughs> so we look forward to continuing this conversation. Yeah. All right. Do we have complaints oh. from the winter? From the winter? We've had a little push-pull. It's less from the merchants then and more from... Um, town crew. Town crew, really, in terms of the cleanup stuff. And and that's a little clearer in terms of the capacity to tow and, and the different options you can get to that. And we did remove some vehicles last winter. And these were some folks that were fairly chronic in this, and that was the deterrent um, yeah. moving forward. So it... it I didn't take it lightly, but it certainly did work. So do we think we can look at some kind of ordinance proposal next meeting? Yeah, yeah, we so can maybe look at approving. Yeah. Great. All right, so let's move on. Update on request to formally name Randolph Union High School Access Road. We said we would loop back around on this phone, and we are. We still have to figure out some of the E911 and addressing types of concerns and just clarify the process since it's not a private drive in the sense we've always thought of it. It's not a public access, um, and it's just creating the time and space to be able to answer some of those questions. So we didn't make it as far as we'd hoped, but yeah. we are still. I, I was thinking some more about this whole situation, and it seems like it, because I just you know drive by there all the time, and it seems like I could see where it would be actually f functional to have like a street name mm -hmm. where you turn into where the parking lots are there. Yeah. Um, so that you can give directions. Um, but I'm wondering if if the street really could just be from 66, from Central Street, to the start of the parking lot. And so it's like mm -hmm. a 200 foot long street. But that's one of the questions to clarify is, or does it continue around and come back out on Forest Street? Yeah, because the original interpretation that it was going to continue around and come back out, and if you did that, there were some parcels that you wouldn't think that would get renumbered would suddenly be on the new road and renumbered, as I understood the E nine hundred one. It just seems like we would we would get all the things we want by having yeah. just be a really short stretch without mm -hmm. any of the negative complexities. It, yeah, and we were thinking even it might even have to be as short as what to the where the maintenance barn is, so they may have to readdress you know the the blue building that sits behind the supervisory right. unit. Right. But that's we all make it as short as we possibly can. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, I, I'm no, serious. No, you're right. Like, like, it's likely that's the make remedy. It just long yeah. enough so that it's a street, and that's and that's it. So it doesn't affect anything else. No, I'm fine with that. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, if we could make it three inches long, that would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> might be but I have a feeling there might be some minimum sure, that's no. bigger than that. I, think well, they, they, I don't know how. I don't know what the yeah. what the statute is. Well, MUTC just the signage rules keep changing. We get bigger, so we may want, we have to go and well, make the it up just to the road certainly needs to be it. yeah the road certainly needs to be longer than the <laughs> sign. That so you're seems probably talking reasonable like at yeah. face value. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We'll let you guys figure that. out. It's not a public street, though. and uh, not in the sense that it's a town owned or maintained or state owned or maintained. It's public in the sense that it serves the school. It's public access. A private access. Program. So it's a private access to a public facility. Hmm. Why weren't these things cleaned up years ago? <laughs> huh? I mean, why didn't we do that when we built the road? Okay. Nobody, nobody thought of it back nope. then. No, nope. doesn't matter. Years, so someone even think of it. This is where the buses are going. It's never too late to have a good idea. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Update from the Energy Committee. Mr. Durr. I'm suspecting that's why you're here. That is why I'm here. But first, I'd like to say how impressed I were was with the dog owners and how considerate and thoughtful they were. And the select board's response, so well done. But that's not why I'm here. Um, the Energy Committee was here, what, nine months ago? And unlike the first time, we sent you. Yep, I have it. You have it? That's very cool. We made this just letter a sure. week ago. Okay. Yep. Because Treaty said one day is not enough. Thank you. Uh, I like the size of the font, too. You can actually yeah, read I my, increased the font, too. I can too. do this without my glasses. It's good. <laughs> um, so from that meeting, 
Um, uh, uh, from Tom, Tom Ayers um, said, we would like an education event around the Climate Solution Act, Climate Action Plan, ultimately leading to the laws that were passed and not passed. Um, so on June 4th, because of COVID, we had a, a Zoom meeting, which actually worked out uh, better. Pat was there uh, 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 for it. And we had Senator Perchlick from the Transportation Committee, Senate, talk about transportation, of course. Um, and he actually appreciated being invited to talk about it. <laughs> And, and then we had Senator McDonald to talk about energy, and in particular, the clean uh, energy standard that failed by one vote from passing. It was very controversial. I haven't figured it out, out yet. Um, and the other thing um, we took away from that first meeting is that um, the select board is interested in saving money on energy in town buildings and reducing use of uh, fossil fuels, which takes us to where we're going. We work particularly with the uh, Bethel Energy Committee, which has the support of their um, of their select board. Uh, also, we're connect. Well, we just recently, uh, and, and and they say said we work particularly with um, Rochester, and so uh, we're we're beginning to pull Rochester in it, and then always the standard uh, uh, Braintree and Brookfield. And I've talked to all of the leaders of those. They're all interested, but we haven't had a meeting. Uh, we, for other reasons, we could have, but we didn't. And at some point in time, we want to get uh, the new energy coordinator from Two Rivers. Stephen Bauer um, has left for a different job. They've hired two new people that they haven't figured out what to do exactly uh, with them yet, but eventually we will get one. We don't know when that will be. Um, so what we want to do is get, well, I'll tell you what I would ask of this select board, the town manager. Name three energy-related projects you would like to see, see done. An easy one, like the fluorescent light drop-in LEDs, a medium one, like some town building you would want considered, and a monster one, which I take, is Chandler. That is going to be so expensive, so complicated, but there are grants, big, big grants out there. And I've spent a lot of time finding out where, the, where those grants are and We've talked to a lot of other people about that uh, grants. Um, and it's really T. Rourke's job to write the grants. That is their job. That's where they get money from the state to write uh, uh, those, those um, grants. And so, where is my letter? Oh, on the status of H518, which is particularly um, relevant to you, fo you folks, um, it's, it's got several <laughs> names. It's the <coughs> Energy um, Resiliency Zone, or something like that, Act. And it passed. But it's now up in a, one of the departments uh, of Vermont. The, um, uh, 
on supplies, the Department of Public Services or something sim similar to that. And they're trying to figure out how to implement. And then the money comes. But we want to get a head start on that. We can, we can bring in Efficiency Vermont to a walkthrough and you get 90% of uh, what you get. So when that money comes forward, you know, we want to go with you, with the town, and get moving on this. And then uh, we want and, and do this with all the towns. You know, I'm sure other towns will have different priorities on what they want done and, 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 and analyzed. And, uh, and then at some point we'll talk to the T. Roar representative. This will probably take a few months, hopefully less, and then report back to the respective towns, you know, what, what our findings are. Great. Especially like the three levels of um, project. Yeah. 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 See, most people will tell you there's a lot of money out there, but there's a lot of projects, big projects out mm -hmm. of there. So whoever's in there first, like a particularly big one, like Chandler, is going to get the lion's share of the money. Yeah, so we want to keep going like the idea of making Chandler more energy efficient. Yeah, Chandler being energy efficient. There's two things I see here. Okay, so you know, Chandler trying to get Chandler energy efficient, I think, is a beneficial thing for everybody in the community. And then we sit on a landfill down here, which is a preferred site for solar. So in my mind, we ought to be using that to do this over here. So however you guys can put that together would be wonderful. So that could be your big project. That, we because can, you've got 80 some odd acres down the landfill, do. and I think the majority of it is suited for solar. So it seems like there's enough solar panels there to create enough electricity to offset and that's where we all these get things. To. But we just want to start a project for now. Sure. Okay, well, this is this is, has to go on for three, four, or five years. Oh, or this more. Is, it's no, a long-term project. It's, a project. it's really long, and that's why I want the easy one. You know, up, up front. Yesterday there was a meeting at VTC. It's still called VTC uh, by VCRD, uh, and uh, they had a panel up there, and there was a man from. Not Mount Felix, Mount, what's the name? Monterey, not Monterey. Anyhow, he had gone through all of this. An example uh, of their accomplishment, they needed to, Montgomery, Montgomery. They needed a $50 million new septic system. They got $13 million out of it out of grants by knowing Mm -hmm. what they're doing basically and i want to look to those kind of folks and have, have we hired a new energy or economic, economic development, development person, person? Yeah. on board now yep started monday what's okay. his name mark rosalbo yeah well, I'm, right there i think he's still on yeah right he's there. waving at us <laughs> hey mark Hello. <laughs> um it's that this all sounds really really promising yeah, it is. So, um, and exciting. Yeah. So next up on our agenda is to consider the grant application from the Kimball Library for the annual interlibrary loan courier subsidy application. I said application twice there. Can I have 10 more seconds? Yes. Can I, can I have a follow-up question is, for Gary? This oh. is the report in the Herald um, after the June 4th um, uh, education event. Okay. My question yeah, is yeah, for yeah. Gary and Trevor, I guess, together, is where we're at with the audits that we were working on. We've got a draft RFP done, but with Stephen coming over to join us as interim and joining Woodstock as a staffer and a multitude of vacancies, it's that's as far as we've gotten. Yeah. So it's we're still looking to doing that. We have a draft. It mentions. Um, I mean, there's some flexibility in it, but it mentions at least the town office, the library, and we could either insert Chandler if we wanted to do that level. The other big energy user we have is the wastewater treatment facility. Mm -hmm. So we thought actually we might do the audit based around those other buildings and the Chandler to be its own animal with its own pathway. Mm -hmm. Kimball being part of the other buildings Kim and Kimball Chandler. And, yeah, yeah. So we could do all those three together. Okay. 
but it's really a matter of just swapping them out. The scope is roughly the same either way. It just might be a different type of evaluation, historic performance space versus whatever type of plant, sequential batch reactor, whatever that is, um, with its different different needs and uses. All right. We get some butts and seats. We get them trained out. <laughs> Can, can turn that one back yeah, on exactly. and can keep them there and keep them yeah we're going to duct tape mark don't worry about the duct tape in your office we're going to duct tape people to their seats from now on <laughs> i thought we were going to lock the doors <laughs> leave them in there <laughs> all righty all right library grant i think amy's on right amy i thought i saw you yeah i'm here hey mark welcome to the town team i had no idea you'd been hired so i just started well thank you Nice to see you. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to wax poetic about how important this grant is, or is the select board happy to go ahead and approve our application? We've done this before, haven't we? Well, annually for the past 20 years. Yeah. So it's uh, pretty much the same thing we've done in the past, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing new. Perfect. So I'll make a motion to uh, move forward with this grant application. Second. I'll, I'll just pause and say, the only problem is that Trini's not here to complain ah, about, about the size of the grant and, the, <laughs> and all the overhead and stuff. So I feel like I have to do that because um, okay. she's not Thanks. here. So I, I almost said that, but thought better of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, might I propose that you also move to approve acceptance of the grant so I don't need to take up more of your time? Um, acceptance along with so make the motion to be approval of the oh, application, approval of the application and, acceptance. and acceptance oh absolutely that way you're sure, just doing it one shot that. okay want to second that one too pat thanks for correcting me on that okay. okay we have a motion and a second all in favor aye aye, aye. thank you amy thanks amy oh, that was thanks amy <laughs> um formalizing the paving bid award this is we sent uh, the analysis back uh, before June and it was before mm -hmm. I went away where we tried to take the three different bids that we got, make them as equivalent as possible, come up with a recommendation for awards. So you've got the list of candidates in the packet. It's quite a bit of linear footage of paving we'll be doing in multiple areas throughout town. It's all inch and a half shim and overlay. Pike Industries, after doing that analysis, they were the apparent low bidder coming out of it. Took a look at our process, took a look at the outcomes, tried to make everything equivalent. Still looks like it's Pike. We've got a not to exceed motion of 455. Um, their bid sheets indicated 452. Our analysis showed 434, 435-ish. Part of the reason for that is that we might, because of some staffing capacity and other issues, we want to make sure we can get Earl Street in there. Um, and then we also may need their help if they can reset some of those stormwater risers and other things that we may not have the, the human capacity to do at the moment mm -hmm. that allows us some wiggle to do that that still fits within where we thought we'd be in terms of the initial response um, and so it's just formalizing what you've already seen and, and, and the idea we've already had um, and if, if we keep moving forward we should see mid-september to late september as the as the actual project date where we see people in town and start paving and, and we'll try to do our best with some of them being high traffic areas we'll do our best with notice advance once we get a schedule pinned in main street's really the big the big one but um, i always chuckle when this happens because for you you know you just hear people complaining about the roads but they also complain about it when they come to pave the roads <laughs> <laughs> and then after we pave we get the speeding complaints yeah, exactly <laughs> can't, have <it> all. <laughs> can't have it all but yeah right. so this is this is quite a few you know, two sections, East Bethel, Earl, Main, Maple, Prince, Salisbury School, and South Pleasant. So it covers quite a bit. Next year, I want to history. <laughs> yeah. Trevor, what caused the, the waves in the main street? Is that just the big trucks? I, I think it's a combination of, yeah, traffic over the years, um, general wear and tear. Usually the rutting is travel patterns plus travel weights, travel volumes, all those things kind of coming Spring together. Spring thaws. Spring thaw, freeze thaw cycles that we studded tires. Yeah. yeah, I don't remember it being yeah. as extreme. Before. No, me neither. But it's but it's been a while, so it's yeah. starting to wear and break down. You know, so that understructure. Yeah. I think in the springtime is when you've got a majority of that happening. But also, there, I noticed there's a lot of studded tire ruts. Yeah, you've got you can see where you're down through at least one layer and headed in two in some places. 
and doing it, we won't certainly save enough to offset any of the cost to do what we're doing, but this gets us a good way to having a great surface to maintain until the state does it in, could be about five years out where there's a larger one that they might do. That's the useful life of this type of treatment type. Um, it's gonna make it a lot easier to plow, to salt, to sweep. Um, right now with that rutting, can't you sweep go through well. and do that, you can't sweep well, you can't salt, you know, basically it melts and then pools. And then you've got a refreeze issue, and um, so this should really, on all those roads, but in Main Street in particular, really facilitate some some safer ride quality in addition to a smoother experience for folks. It sounds like there's really nothing we can do differently. That one. I don't know if you. I'm wondering. not even sure if you <clears throat> took it all up, changed the sub base, changed the mix. I don't know. We're not in the, the, in the long run. I don't know that you get there. Yeah, I mean, when I, and it's. Other towns are experiencing yeah. the same thing in their high traffic areas, and I see it all the time. Yeah. And what's 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 this section of um, South Pleasant Street? Does this land cover? Uh, this would essentially come from Main Street down, whatever that lineage linear footage would be down. I think to about where Maple comes out, maybe, or where there's a pavement seam just beyond it. So before it really turns into Beanville. Okay. Road. Just like. Crest of the hill, maybe. Yeah, I think it because that's it's really bad through there. Yeah, fair view. I think it gets just past. Fair yeah, fair, fair, fair view. Fair right, view. fair view. Yeah, that was the one I couldn't think. Yeah, of. no, it's yeah, it's yeah, pretty it's pretty bad down through there. I tell you, yeah. hit that with a truck. So. It was last year, I remember. <laughs> no, it's bad. It's not getting better. It's not. In, yeah, so this yeah. will help dramatically. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So motion. Sure, Pat. Go ahead. <laughs> um. I'll move to approve the bid from Pike for paving. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, uh, True Rivers representative appointment. Ramsey, after many years of diligent and faithful service, has decided not to continue as the town's representative to the Two Rivers Ottaquichi Regional Commission. So she is stepping away from that role. Chris Sargent, who'd expressed interest at some other point prior, um, has expressed interest in filling in. You've got application materials from him. Um, we're currently without a representative as a result. I think Ramsey ended up, her last meeting was the last one T. Rourke had. Um, Have you done an announcement asking for candidates or not? No, these are just people we knew were interested. There have been prior conversations, so if you wanted to stick a pin in it so we could do that, we can throw yeah, that. that. I just think we kind of should ask yeah. if there's anybody interested. Yeah. Make it public that there's a yeah. position. I think. I'm sorry, I was actually looking at were, Chris's <laughs> letter yeah. okay. um, while I was double, okay. I was double Well, I just think if, if we haven't, if Ramsey just recently resigned, mm -hmm. And we haven't made it known that she's resigned, and I just think we should, you know, open it up to the public at large, and just for a month and see if anybody steps up and said, "Oh, I'd like to do that." Pretty unlikely, but well, in the all sense of I fairness, would, I would right, and I I would ordinarily agree with you right off. Mm -hmm. However, have you seen Chris's letter? I know Chris. <laughs> um, it's hard to, to imagine. He used to work there. He used to work there, right? So it's, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I'm. So, I'm just saying, it's like, I'm, I'm fine I'm, with anything you we all agree to do. Okay. I'd, I think I'd prefer to go ahead. Okay. And, and but if other people don't want to do that. No. Um, if you're willing to relent slightly, I'm, Harry. I'm, yeah, I'm, no problem. I'm just <laughs> saying. And the wrinkle. We, we've, we have had a procedure in the past, so I'm just saying, you know, should we keep that or not? The wrinkle tonight is because there's three of you. All three of you have to agree on everything in order for it to... You know, to I'm be not valid. So. Disagree. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'll I'll move to approve Chris Sargent as our Two sure. Rivers Ottaquichi Regional Planning Commission member. Sure. I'll second it. All in favor. <clears throat> Aye. 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 Zoning Administrator. With Mark joining the team as of Monday. Um, there is no longer a need for an interim zoning administrator. <laughs> Saddened as that interim individual so is. They look really sad. I do. I feel, I feel all torn up. And Mark has done a great job already jumping in and trying to, to grab some of these pieces. Um, this role, you know, when Josh had it, they've been combined. They're combined for now. 
So we're just essentially making that formal, that piece uh, of the duties. So recommendation is there is to appoint Mark as the zoning administrator, I'm certainly there to, to help out. We were talking today about a subdivision related question that came in, for example. So um, for whatever it's worth and whatever I picked up, it's certainly there and available. Um, but this restores us to that. And then there's a little plug in there too. I think one of the things to talk about during the budget process, both with the committee and with the board is, um, should those roles be kept together? Or should we come up with some other kind of framework for the zoning piece in particular, um, so that the economic development piece can focus on economic and community development activities, the things that um, can take up the lion's share of the time and maybe the zoning can go into some other form. There are different ways we could end up slicing that out everything from trying to find a part-time like a 20 hour zoning minister i think that's the, the hardest avenue to walk in terms of actually filling mm -hmm. a position yeah um we could look at a shared uh full-time zoning administrator we know we've got some neighboring towns that have their own sort of part-time situations I haven't talked to them we also know that norwich for example is in a similar boat so there might be other creative collaborations out there where we make one full-time slot but it's shared between two communities or we could also take that zoning administrator and either plug it into a planning and zoning administrator that some towns have or we could um we've talked about sort of a code enforcement official i think heartland has this position where it's the zoning piece but we combine a few other things you know with it from e911 to zone uh, to sign officer to mm -hmm. could even maybe make them a deputy or a full health officer if you wanted to so then this person does mm. all of the regulatory pieces i could see the advantages of that in, in the chain and, and that would actually i think if i had to put in the the initial early plug that might be the model that fits our needs the best and really could jump us ahead if we could find somebody to fill it jump us ahead in terms of the provision of service and and how to answer the stuff that comes in in an effective manner so it's just a little plug we've got some time to think through those things obviously but I think if we were to look at sort of how we're constructed, taking that off, it maximizes what we can get out of both pieces. Well, I think. that's similar to what we had when we had Marty here. Yeah. And Marty was, you know, town engineer slash zoning administrator. But Marty was part-time. And Marty was part-time, correct. So, this so would, that kind of filled that really well. It was well. very convenient, yeah. 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 So this would be an expansion of our labor force, potentially. Yeah, but Which probably getting, fill some needed areas. Not well. I, I'm right. Well, yeah, needed yeah. for sure, but you know, it's it's always about money. Right? Yeah. Well, so that's just a decision. Tax rate yeah. just went down. There you go. Um, it wouldn't necessarily be an expansion from what we used to have. Though. No, with Marty. No. You mean before before Marty? With Marty. With Marty. You know what I'm saying? But Marty was a part-time employee. Right. And we're talking about a full-time position. But handling some other duties. So I don't know. Yeah, maybe so. I'm, just, I think I'm, it's, just, I'm not saying it's a deal breaker. No, I'm no, just no. pointing out that it's it's you know it's we would be considering mm -hmm. enlarging the town staff by a small amount. Right. Initially, you had some reservations about economic development and zoning being the same person. Yeah. You still yeah. have those same ones. Yeah. 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 yeah Trevor was, yeah. I think, alluding to that, weren't you? Yeah. Uh, I think it's a little bit. Um, it does help that your advocate and your regulator are split apart. Um, yeah. In small towns, you don't always have that don't luxury. Get that. Yeah, luxury. Just because you don't have the buy, you don't have the depth. But or, I do know buy. that you know from but. previous conversations I've had with Josh, you know, prior to his departure, you know, zoning was, you know, was hampering his ability mm -hmm. to meet the needs of the economic development side of things, and and you know some of that was you know ability to write grants and, mm -hmm. and you know do that kind of stuff for us that we needed. Yeah. So you know that was really stretching him thin. It's so it, it's a little bit like. Um, I almost think of zoning as like this flood event you know is going to happen every so often. So it'll be really quiet and fit inside a nice little box. And so you can focus on the other activities. And then when the rain event occurs and the water overwhelms, it becomes what you do for that week or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then that cycle repeats itself. So over the course of the year, it's maybe not a ton of hours. It's just you can't ever fully predict the flow. Like I got back from the week away and it was relatively quiet the week before and when I got back there were seven applications in the queue um, a lot of questions. and a lot of questions and it was yeah no, I, and, and then the week after there I don't think anybody submitted anything or we had one new application one question mm -hmm. so yeah 
So it's really about, it's a little bit about splitting those two pieces and a little bit about trying to maximize everybody's ability so that if we want, we really want to commit to that community and economic development position to make the most of it, let's set that person free to do that. And I really do think it would improve our level of service overall if we could combine some of these other things that, that don't always have a home or have a yeah. Yeah. pseudo volunteer that's or whatever a, it's it is. It's a really good, it's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's an interesting idea for sure. Uh, junkyard ordinance, even if it's just somebody to intake that, work through that. I mean, yeah, some of these yeah. things that all fit. So, but that's a future plug. For now, okay. we want to bestow upon Mark is what we're asking, this prestigious, wonderful honor. Is it a three-year or five-year? They're usually three, yeah. Three. And yeah. does it start now? It would start, yeah. Yep. They don't run on the annual calendar with the others. They start at the time of appointment. So, huh. I'll move to appoint Mark Rosalvo as our Zoning administrator. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Congratulations, Mark. Congratulations, Trevor. Congratulations, <laughs> Trevor. All okay. Right. Uh, appointment of health officer and deputy health officer. So yeah, really what you're doing is recommending appointment. There's come up at the end of September since we had the capability to get on this agenda. Um, figure we'd do that now. So in a quirk from all the other ones, Commissioner Health appoints town health officer and the deputy health officer. You recommend those people to them. Um, and then you're part of the local board of health along with them should we ever have to convene under that um, under that framework. Um, it's, so, that's new to me. I did not know we had a local board of health. Yeah, it's the select board plus the town health officer. I wonder when the last time a meeting of the local health board was convened was. It would have been, could have conceivably been something, um, you know, you have a problem property where you've got garbage, mm. vermin, those types of things. That might be where you pull the board of health together because mm. the actions that would fit would fit within. We didn't go down that path. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, so what do we need to do, Trevor? It would just be both Melissa and Bob are willing to continue to serve. Um, and so if you're willing to recommend them, the motion that's requested is to recommend the reappointment or the appointment. We've got some forms that may have already gone around. Yep. Um, that then go to the Department of Health should you make the motion. Someone would like to make a motion? Sure. I'll make the motion to recommend to appoint we had who? Uh, Melissa Scalera. Melissa and Scribner A. And Bob Pressy as the deputy. Yeah, okay, I would make a motion to do that. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Manager's report. This is my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> so beyond uh, what's written, there's going to be, I think we put the notice out, um, Installation of the mural is going to happen Sunday um, on Main Street. So we put out a little notice. We're going to close off those parking spaces by the gazebo to help facilitate safe installation and use of equipment and all that. Um, and what time are you closing that off? We're going to try to close it at 8 p.m. on Saturday. So that way it's available Sunday morning when folks like get there. When I get there at 6 o'clock with a lift, I'll be able to unload the lift? Yep. You. Yes. Yeah. yes. We've okay. communicated with the sheriff's department so that they're aware. Um, Jessica's going to put notes on I was aware. and got, on the doors up there. Yeah, so I flyers, plans mm -hmm. to put notes on the doors for anybody who might be parked in there that shouldn't be to harken back to that earlier conversation. Perfect. Um, yeah. And then Mark's here with us. Um, we're setting up a second interview, hopefully, for next week for that recreation director's position. Um, and then we're still working to fill those finance roles and until then that'll probably be where I start to dig in in addition to the regular duties as we you know the number of jobs down thankfully but there's still still a few of them and Kim's been helping out with the accounts payable piece Cynthia from Nemrix has been a lifesaver um, and has done really wonderful work and we're catching up but um, You'll take it. And as budget season is around the corner, I'm just going to hang on to that, having had to complete it last year when Cliff left. So budgeting, capital budgeting, I'll just hang on to that, stay with the budget committee through the cycle, even if we hire someone new, just have them ride shotgun, essentially, yeah, when they come up. Just ride shotgun with you? Yeah. Great. 
Because for better or worse right now, I'm the institutional knowledge of that end. So you are it. Yeah. So, so we'll, we'll dig in there and, and mm -hmm. I think, was there anything else happening? I think that's it. Apparently we have potholes around town too. Yeah, do we have money to fix those? We, we do. We do, and we've been doing them. We're going to rent a roller. Some of the challenge we've had is we we took our old 1983 roller, yeah, yeah, horse-drawn roller. Um, we had an old roller, and some of the, the areas that we're trying to fix, it's a little bit easier to kind of cut them out, do some more extensive patching, and they're really deep. And so to try to hand tamp these, we found is just first of all, it's not very efficient, and you sort of have to moderate workload. You must have to think of it like professional athletes. What's your what's your workload? How many games in a row do you play before you have to sit? So we found it was easier and more effective with the roller to do that. But we've had an issue with now three pumps, and we're in a bit of an argument with the, the supplier of those pumps. They've mm -hmm. ended up failing relatively. The last one only made it, I think it was less than three hours. Um, there have been metal shavings. It's just been a very difficult situation. We've priced out everything from new ones, but I think we're going to rent one, build something into the budget. But that'll allow us to finish kind of a pothole program now. And then the idea would be to... Um, see if we can rent it again in the spring when we come out of winter and some of the patchwork hasn't held um, and go around and do those again. Some of the areas we're getting a lot of the calls or feedback on will be addressed through the paving program. Um, and yeah, so, I mean, that's the paving yeah. program is going to hit the majority of those, yeah. but don't forget Hull Street. That's not yeah. your paving program. <laughs> and then the guys are also right now up on Howard Hill finishing up that grants and aid project. Um, that we got rolled over from last year. I don't know if you've been up there. It's yeah, looking yep. um, a nice stone line ditching, a little bit of widening. We've done some ledge removal, some berm Fixed removal. The corner up. Yeah. And That's so good. we'll finish up with that, do a few other of those while we still have the excavator and, and a few of those other tools. Um, and so they've been trying to dig in on some of that a little bit more. We got winter sand, I think, tucked away already, or we're really close. It looks like it's what that it's... That area seems to be in a better place. I was going to say, it's by all accounts, it's the type of thing it should be. Um, yeah, it's getting there. Yeah. Absolutely. So they've made good progress. And, yep. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yep. Great. All right. Well, next on our agenda is executive session. Yeah, we had two. The real estate one just to be a real quick one on a topic we've had a few other times. And okay. Make a motion to go into executive session. So we need to word this in a particular way. I think because of the real estate, you got to do the finding that it's necessary, and then the motion to enter. Okay, so you want me to redo the motion. So the first one would be the it's necessary, prudent, and premature general public knowledge would place the town at a disadvantage. Exactly what you said. <laughs> Is that a motion? Yes. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We will enter executive session.